the program. Thank you to Mr. Trem. We are going to call upon the family to share with us their experience with uh, Mr. Vala. We are going to start with them according to this order. Jan, and so he will be followed by Mefro Elita Tiklek. Can Jan start? Thank you. Mr. President Ramaphosa, Ministers, Deputy Ministers, MECs, leaders of political parties, members of the Diplomatic Corps, the clergy, ladies and gentlemen. As a family accustomed to opinions, remarks and judgments, on the day of his death, it reminded of a quote by Nietzsche, we praise or find fault, depending on which of the two provides more opportunity for our own powers of judgment to shine. On the 11th of the 11th month, almost 11 o'clock, 2021, my father passed away while the world celebrated Remembrance Day when a war ended and a peace accord was signed way back in 1918. I'm convinced that on that day in 1918, apologies was offered by all parties, accepted or rejected, resulting in peace nonetheless. 11 November 2021, a choir of repent, repent, went up from kitchen tables to parliament. An apology accepted adds meaning, creates opportunity for forgiveness, for peace and coexistence. An apology rejected becomes meaningless and will be the rejector's cross to carry. Ik denk vandaag ook aan mijn ma, Marika, en mijn broer. Al mijn pa's wonderlijke vrienden voor die jaren, wat om gegrond, eerlijk en menselijk ondersteun het. Aan opa Jan en oma Corrie en oom Wimpy, die DNA van zijn identiteit, zijn fundamentele waardes was gevormd Dear zijn familie, kerk, Afrikanerskap, sport, die Bosveld, in Zuid-Afrika en al zijn mensen. He was my father, the man that always provided an unconditional space, home to us as children, where we could love, criticize, be happy, get and give advice. Elita. You are his sole companion. Your love story is straight from a classic novel. He loved you completely. Thank you for loving him. There is so much I could thank him for. Dad, for the comfort you always provided, your sense of truth and wisdom, your wit and humor. You were never interested in accolades. Thank you for the example you live by. That kindness is not a weakness. A few months ago, I asked him if he had any wisdom for the grandchildren. Tell them what I told you, he said. It's nothing new, but it's timeless advice. He often told me, interaction with people should be based on humanity, respect, justice, with an attitude of earning something, deserving nothing. 
Be grateful. Gratitude changes what you have into enough. He warned me never to get kidnapped by ideologies and religion. For the thoughts of those around you will become your beliefs and you will embrace their limits and adopt their fears. Do not lift fenced in. Ask questions. Challenge the status quo. Always adding without starting a rebellion. Without starting a rebellion. The following served me very well throughout my life. And he used to say, remember that you can never be present if you are looking backwards. For the thoughts, oh, sorry, history will repeat itself until such time you learn from it and only then you can change your path and make a choice. The poem Ode to Joy by Friedrich Schiller and the melody to which Beethoven set the text of the Ninth Symphony is how I will remember my father. The aim of the text in the time was to bring people together, promote unity, encourage peaceful coexistence and expressing the brotherhood of man. The drama and the rhythm of the melody describe the joyful rite of progress he lived by. He also understood that joy is heavenly in origin and available to humankind through a loving God. God being the evidence that should give all man hope and allow them joy in that hope. I will miss his dignity, gentlemanliness, approachable elegance, charisma without audacity. I miss him already. Tot ziens. Goodbye. Thank you.